Hello, welcome to He's Hot But Something Is Off with me, Jess Joey T. I'm back. I'm back from Asia. I got back yesterday. It is Wednesday afternoon as I recorded this. And I was over there for, I think, just under a week. So I was in Bangkok to start. Was there for about six or seven days. And then I spent about four full days in Taipei, stayed with some... Uh, very generous friends that were willing to host me in Taipei, but in Bangkok, I got a couple hotels. Yeah, it was a uh, work trip. So literally, I went just to do collabs. It was Songkran in Thailand at that time. So Songkran is the Thai New Year. Um, so there's a lot of celebrations and festivals going on, a lot of like water fights and things like that on the street. Um, and a lot of... Uh, creators actually go to Bangkok as well. A lot of gays actually go to Bangkok at certain times of the year. Um, so during Songkran, there are some gay parties and things like that that are in town. And yeah, uh, successful trip, which was good. I've never done a pure collab trip before where the main purpose of traveling was to do a bunch of collabs with other creators. So... It was, I would say I was nervous going into it because I did a lot of preparation very early on. I booked the trip back in like January-ish. So, uh, and I had reached out as many creators that I think were suitable to collab with, uh, to collab with as I thought I could. And yeah, it worked out pretty well, I guess partially because I really needed to be organized for it. It doesn't make a lot of sense. It's quite risky to fly somewhere, especially halfway around the world, to do a bunch of collabs if you hadn't set them up in advance. It's possible to find people to collab with on shorter notice, kind of on the spot. Uh, I had, I think one, one of my collabs was like, I didn't book it until like a couple of days before. And it wasn't one that I was planning on doing, but there was another one I canceled, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, so it was a pretty successful trip. Um, it, it's not something I would do all the time because in a way it's pretty intense, but also in a way it wasn't because um, I knew some creators that would do multiple collabs a day. And I kind of had this, not a rule, but I had... A guideline for myself where, okay, for this trip, if I averaged one per full day that I was there, one per day basically, that's a pretty good result. You know, that's like a good amount of work that I'm doing. And for the times where I'm not collabing, uh, I kind of sort of just treated it as like a vacation. I didn't do very much, honestly. I just I uh, didn't go to any parties. There were definitely some parties doing Songkran in Bangkok, um, like gay parties and things like that. I was tempted to go, but I think fate intervened. And by the time I had kind of wanted to go to one of them, the online ticket sales had already ended. So for me, that was a sign that if I had to line up at the door to get a ticket, it's a sign that, you know what, I should just skip it. So I did. But uh, things were good, was very productive. Um, yeah, and now I'm back. I was uh, kind of eager in the in the uh, kind of later parts of near the end of the trip. I was kind of sort of uh, maybe not eager, not homesick, but it is very nice to be back in your own house and back in your own bed and not have that language barrier because I don't speak Mandarin. I know some very, very basic things in Mandarin, like very, very basic uh, things. I don't think I know any Thai at all. Um, so yeah, the language barrier, you know, for like a little bit is fine. But, you know, for like two weeks to be in places where you don't really speak the language kind of gets like a little bit difficult. But yeah, um, I'm glad to be back. Normal service uh, will be resumed. Uh, I've got a lot of content that I have to go through. Um but yeah, it was great to have met a lot of people, worked with a lot of people. I kind of treat it as a little bit of a mini vacation. That's why outside of the collapse, I didn't really do that much. Um, the collapse obviously takes some amount of energy. 
Um, but I'm not a sightseeing person. I don't like exploring places very, very much. And honestly, the times where I wasn't doing the collab, I just stayed in. <laughs> I just stayed in, and the friends that I were uh, the friends that I were staying with in Taipei, um, I crashed at their place for about four days. They have this like super nice condo, um, and they, they kept on joking that whenever they saw me in the apartment, I was always in the same place, which is on the couch directly in front of their TV. Um, but <laughs> basically, when they wake up in the morning, I would be like watching TV or in the living room and then they would go do work and then I would go like do a collab and do my work and then I come back before they do and then when they come up they still see me in the same place on the couch but not because I've been there for the whole day yeah but I just needed a little bit of like downtime uh so I just watched a bunch of tv in uh when I was in Taipei uh my friends had Netflix I don't have Netflix I know it's weird but my friends had Netflix and during the downtime, I watched an entire uh, series on Netflix, a K-drama. It was called King the Land. Just randomly was browsing it and just like put it on. And I ended up really, really liking it. So that was good. I follow Formula One. And last weekend was a Formula One race in Shanghai. So I downloaded that and watched that. And also, for those who follow Drag Race, it was the season finale for Drag Race um, also that this past weekend. For those who haven't watched it, I'm not going to spoil it for you, uh, but I was, uh, I was very happy with who won. And the friends that I was staying with in Taipei uh, actually went with them to a uh, drag race viewing party. Uh, and I've never been to a drag race viewing party before, but a lot of Bars in a lot of places uh, do host, uh, you know, whenever Drag Race is on, on like a Friday or Saturday night, they do host a viewing party. Um, yeah, but I've never been to one, and this was cool because uh, Nymphia is in the top three, and she is the first Taiwanese queen to ever compete. And I was like in Taiwan, I was in Taipei, so it was kind of like uh, really special to be able to watch the finale and find out who the winner was um, along with like the locals in Taipei at this like watch party that uh, a few of the local drag queens were hosting. So I went with my friends. So that was, that was really cool. Um, any noteworthy stories from my travels? Well, the, the collabs, well, they're on OnlyFans and I'm also on Just For Fans. So you, you guys can... Go subscribe there. If you follow my Twitter, my Twitter is basically my billboard for all like the OF type of content. So if you want updates on, you know, all those collabs and, you know, who I worked with and as they come out, get the news and the previews and that's all on my Twitter. But there was one collab that I did. It was the last collab that I did. His name is Leo. And I did post a pic of us, nothing naughty, just a very like G-rated pic on my Instagram. He's so cute. I kind of had a crush on him uh, when I started doing OF and started finding out, you know, the creators in Asia. Very, very cute. So cute and uh, even better to work with and even cuter in person. So yeah, did a bunch of collabs. You want to follow me, kind of get updates on those. The Twitter is probably like the best place to do that. Any noteworthy stories? Okay, I would say um, on the way back, I flew from Taipei and I was connecting in Hong Kong airport uh, on my way back to Los Angeles. And I had a few hours in the connection and I was at a lounge, a Singapore Airlines lounge at Hong Kong airport. And I've been there once before a long time ago, but um, it's a nice Singapore Airlines it's kind of more uh, more like prestigious airline, and their lounges are very highly rated amongst all the other airlines. So um, there were a few things that was very interesting during my time there. Um, this gets a little gross, uh, but in the men's oh god, in the men's restroom at some point during my time there. Because when I first went in there, um, I remember I went in and I needed to pee. So, like, I dropped off my stuff at a seat and then I went to the uh, restroom and, you know, fine, nothing eventful. 
at some point during my time there, I don't know how, in the corner on the floor where the urinals were, someone had somehow deposited a number two in like a plastic bag that wasn't like tied up because you can kind of see the number two like in the bag, the bag. I don't know why they just tied up the bag. And it was like in the corner where the urinal were and you could smell it, which is like, I don't know what happened for some person to have left that there. But it was like not pleasant. <laughs> Let me just put it that way. And I won't go into any greater details because this is not exactly, if you happen to be eating a meal while listening to this, my apologies. But it's so weird in like a nice lounge at a nice airport to have that is like even at not even at lounge at any at any restroom at any location this would be disgusting but in like a nice lounge at a nice airport where it's like you know uh customers with airline status or like business class customers or like first class customers it's like i don't know it's gross like extra gross so that's the first thing that was very weird um to say the least and the second thing that was a little interesting was um, all these lounges, you've never been in one, the center thing for a lounge to have is food and drinks. You know, obviously there's like a bunch of chairs and tables and places for you to like sit down and lounge or whatever. But every lounge has some amount of food. It's all almost always buffet style. And they have like a bar and there's like drinks and stuff like that. And then, yeah. That's basically what every lounge has. So there was a buffet, and uh, there was uh, they were serving brownies, and I was uh, and they have tongs. It's like a buffet, you know. In a buffet, there's like spoons and tongs to, you know, grab the food onto your plate. This guy, um, I was in front of the brownies plate, and it was like on a corner of a table. So this guy came up on like the side of the table, and he just uses his hands to like grab a bunch of brownies right off the plate which i don't know if you know i don't know if this person oh, i'm trying to let sugarcoat this and be so pc about it for me it's a little disgusting but maybe this person had some sort of like i don't know condition that made it not possible for them to like use the tongs or to wait like the five seconds for me to finish it. I wasn't taking a long time. I knew I wanted a couple of brownies. I just grabbed them and I went. I wasn't like loitering or anything. So for these types of things, I always try to give like the benefit of the doubt because there's always like a reason people do things. Sometimes people do things like just because they don't care, you know, but that's like usually very obvious. I don't know if this person, I didn't even look up, but like I was grabbing a couple of brownies from the front of the plate with the tongs and he just like, use his raw hands and grab like a bunch of brownies from like the back of that plate, which is a little jarring to see. And that's how I'm always thinking like, oh, there, there must be some reason this person did that, which is not really what is expected of one to do at a buffet. There must be some good reason. I don't, something in my head basically says you can't assume someone is someone has bad intent, you know, there's like some good reason someone is doing that. But I did notice that and I made a mental note to myself that, okay, don't go, don't touch the brownies in the back of the plate because I don't know how many brownies he touched and didn't grab and yeah. So that was weird. Let's put it that way. And they, um, this person and I, I guess his wife or whatever, they, uh, actually were sitting in the table behind me and I didn't see them, but like their chairs were very high and they were kind of very private chairs. They were very behind me. A little bit later, like this same guy uh, was talking to his wife and like they had, they were walking back to the table behind mine. And then he said like, uh, like what the fuck? The, the attendant took our napkins or something like that. It, but like, you know, I don't care if people swear. I swear all the time. But, you know, in, in like a in like a airport lounge where it's like a little bit quieter, you know, when you say something like, what the fuck? It wasn't yelling, but it was not quiet. When you say something like, what the fuck? It's like, 
in that environment, it catches your ear. And he was seeing it right as he walked by my table. And so I like looked up. So it's like, you know, I swear all, I don't care about serving personally, honestly. I, I swear on this podcast, but in like a, you know, public space, I try to mind my language a little bit because there are like families and kids and other people and it's just not polite. But, you know, again, it's like, I don't know if this person had some reason that he wasn't able to control his, or some people just don't care, you know, but I didn't try to analyze that much, but it was just like, he just said like, he just said like, what the fuck, like right as he walked by my table. So I clearly just looked up. Yeah. Um, and I have this thing where I talk really loud. I think even on this podcast, you guys can probably tell I talk really loud. But the other thing that was a little distracting for me in the lounge is there were like a few people that um, just, this is one of my, this is one of my, like, my pet peeves. If you're in a public space and you're not using headphones and you're using the speakerphone on your phone for to watch a TikTok video or to have a phone call or to like have music or do whatever, you're a monster. There's like there was one guy at the gym like at, here in LA like a few weeks ago. He just had his music blasting on his phone. Like, don't do that. Like that's just so inconsiderate. It's like there's already music that the gym plays and everyone has their ear. I mean. It's like just, it's just, I think it's really not considerate. Like, how hard it is, how hard is it for you to have headphones? Headphones are like, you can buy headphones for like $5. You can afford your like $1,000 iPhone, you can't afford $5 headphones. If you forgot your headphones that day, like, you know what? Tough. Don't be playing your music out loud. I recently forgot my headphones and I just went without. I didn't turn up the speaker on my iPhone and blast it so that everybody within a 20 feet radius of me would hear my music instead of their own music. I think that's just rude. But anyways, there were like a couple of people that were taking phone calls on speakerphone. <sighs> you know what? Don't Just don't use speakerphone when it's like a quiet environment where other people are around. If you were like at the gate in the terminal where it's not so quiet and not such kind of more like a private-ish space, like whatever. Um, but it, it this is like a quieter, kind of cozier environment where you really shouldn't be using speakerphone. And these people were also talking loudly themselves. You know, people tend to talk loudly when they're on the phone naturally, right? But they were like, this couple, they were just like, the indoor voice, honestly, it, they were loud for me and I'm a loud person and I thought they were loud. It's, you know, people tend to want to have some peace and relaxation in a lounge. It's not, they don't expect complete silence, but it's quite enough where like you should kind of mind your voice, you know? And these people were also like complaining about this and that. They were just not quiet the entire time. They were just loud the entire time. I'm sure at the other end of the lounge, you could hear these people. So I had to put my headphones in because they were like literally, uh, their table was like six feet away from mine. And I didn't want to hear other people complaining out loud and having multiple phone conversations on CB phone out loud. Like, why is it so hard to have headphones? I'm surprised if it was like a more polite country, like in Japan, in Japan is so um, impolite to talk on the phone in a lot of public spaces. Like if you were talking on the phone on the bus on public transit, people would come up to you and like who are like the bus driver or like the uh, train attendant or whoever, they would actually come up to you and tell you like, you can't, you can't be talking on the phone. Because in Japan is like very, impolite so impolite that like people will actually tell you to not do that um hong kong is not like to that level so you know but i wish the uh the the staff there would have went over to that table and be like could you just take it down like a couple of notches you can still you know people on the phone can still hear you if you don't yell so yeah there you go it's very interesting uh I, i've said this before you know, don't be jealous of people that have lounge access. You know, I was glad to be in there just to have the food. But honestly, sometimes just being at like an empty gate is so much more peaceful, especially at an airport where 
the terminals are kind of quite large and very spaced out. So Hong Kong Airport, like it, the terminals and the gate areas are like huge. You know, if you found an empty gate, um, there's it, it's because it's everything's so spread out and like the terminals and the gate areas are so large. Um, it's actually very relaxing. You know, you can have your headphones on, not have to crank the volume up. And there's probably like no one within like 10, 15 feet of you around you. Definitely not someone who's like six feet away yelling loudly on a speakerphone to have a phone call and complaining about this and that out loud, uh, talking to themselves. So yeah, don't be jealous of people that, you know, that have lounge access because the, yeah, the food is great. The drink are great if you want to have a drink beyond that though it's not as nice of a environment as you think because you know they try to put a lot of people try to cram a lot of tables and things like that you know and there's all sorts of people out there some people are loud some people are talking on their phones and blah 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 all that kind of stuff yeah so I was there for the food I wasn't there for like the ambiance if you will so yeah um, but I'm glad that I was able to get, have a, have a productive trip. Um, I'm glad to be home. I tried to go to the gym for the first time back home today. And I definitely, <laughs> I haven't been to the gym in like a week and a half. I went to the gym a couple of times when I first got to Bangkok. Um, not like a hard workout just to get something in. I think I went two, maybe three times at the hotel. And then afterwards I just like gave up. <laughs> so I just didn't go to the gym at all. Yeah. Um, those are the most noteworthy stories just from like the two hours that in that one lounge was like the most noteworthy thing, to be really honest. Um, I did fly business class across the uh, Pacific Ocean for like the long part. I think I connected in Hong Kong both ways and from LA to Hong Kong or from California to Hong Kong both ways. I did fly business class and I didn't feel guilty for flying business class um, because it's not like I pay for business class tickets, you know, but I do, I, I, I don't want to give the impression that I'm just taking my fans, you know, like the money that I earn from my fans and splashing it on some like business class tickets because I bought regular discount economy uh, fares for the whole trip and I was uh, yeah I bought regular discount economy fares which which is what most people do and I had status with United and when you get a certain status with United they give you uh, something called plus point which is an upgrade currency separate from regular miles and you can use those points to request for an upgrade on your flights. Sometimes they clear, sometimes they don't, okay? So if there's like a whole bunch of people trying to use those plus points, those upgrade currencies to try to upgrade on your flight, then they have some priority system for like who gets those upgrades. So just because you have those upgrade currencies and you apply those upgrade points to a reservation doesn't mean they'll go through. I actually spent a couple of weeks looking at, okay, which route can I take from LA to Bangkok to maximize my chances that if I bought a discount economy regular fare, um, that those upgrades will go through because it's far from guaranteed that they will go through. And uh, that's why I chose to route myself through Hong Kong because the uh, California to Hong Kong, uh, that route is uh, not as popular uh, not as many people fly the route versus here to Japan or here to Taipei, which are the other two most common connection points if you're going to go to Bangkok. There's no direct flights from California to Bangkok. You have to connect somewhere in Asia. And those three uh, are the biggest hubs, most major hubs. Tokyo and Japan is probably like number one in terms of like how often people use that route to connect. So I intentionally chose to fly through Hong Kong because I knew it was lower demand Therefore, more likely that uh, there would be more business class seats available for people who want to potentially upgrade. And it worked. And I booked the flights like three months before, not at the last minute, so that the fares were like nice and cheap, not like when you book last minute and they're expensive. And so there's a lot of strategy that went into me getting those business class seats. But I am kind of sort of aware, like, you know, if I post a picture of me in business class and 
some of my subscribers see it, are they going to think, oh, he's always, you know, like, but some, sometimes I do say, and it's true, I say on there, you know, um, you know, if, if you buy this PPV, I have some paid videos, you know, if you buy this paid video, it helps me to, you know, pay for my trips to like Asia to do collabs and pays for travel to like, you know, work for other creators and things like that. And it does, but I don't want to give the impression like, oh, you buying this video is just so that I can fly business class because that is not the case. I did fly business class using points, frequent flyer points that I earned uh, previously last year, and they're like use it or lose it. They expire after like 12 or 18 months, but I paid discount economy fare for this Asia collab trip, and I was able to use my points and strategize to increase my chances that my upgrade, my free upgrade using those points would clear, and they did clear. So I don't feel guilty for it, but I feel the need to like explain, um, even though there's only three of you that listen to this. Um, there's a lot of, uh, for people who are into points and stuff, there are a lot of, it's very popular to basically uh, strategize and basically figure out how to get free upgrades to uh, premium economy, to business class, to first class. Um, it's actually a thing that people are very like AV enthusiasts, travel enthusiasts, frequent travelers uh, that they try to do because I've never paid for a business class seat, full fare out of my own pocket. Every time I phone business class, which is not like super often, but it, it's been enough. Um, it's been because I use some sort of miles or points to upgrade. And, you know, everything I, almost everything, all, all the money I spend goes on a credit card, except for like things like the mortgage or like certain things where like it, they don't take a credit card or like they charge a hefty fee to use a credit card to pay for things like HOA fees, mortgages, some of the bills, et cetera. But for everything where I could use a credit card and it doesn't cost extra to use a credit card, I use a credit card. I got a bunch of credit cards so that I can earn the maximum amount of points depending on the purchase. There's a credit card I use um, just to buy airfare because it's like more points to use that credit card to buy airfare. Uh, if I go to a drugstore, it's a different credit card. Because the other credit card gives me more points when I buy things at a drugstore. Groceries go on a third credit card, but that credit card gives you the most points on groceries and restaurants. And like, you know, it's it gets very complicated. But I'm very big into you know getting points and earning miles just through credit cards and through flying and things like that. I fly a decent amount. Flying does cost money, obviously. I've cut back on travel this year so far. Um, but last year I was doing a lot of travel and, you know, every time I fly, uh, you earn miles. Every time I spend some money on a credit card, it earns miles. And, you know, that all adds up. And yeah, so that's how I'm able to sometimes, you know, for like a long haul trip when you're in. So here at Hong Kong and back, each way is like 12 to 14 hours, depending on like tailwind and which direction you're going. But that's a pretty long flight. And it's extremely nice, obviously, to have like a business class seat that lays flat um, so that you could sleep on such a long flight, right? So, but I, I've never paid for, I would never pay for a business class ticket, maybe for my mom. Maybe. So mom travels once in a great while. My mom doesn't really travel, but for my mom, that's where I would like, uh, we've done it a couple of times where me and my brother, for example, uh, we paid for my mom's airfare to like go to Japan to vacation with my uh, sister. So my sister has two kids. I'm like with the brother-in-law, um, you know, I think once a year they go to like Hong Kong just to visit and they went to Japan to like Disneyland and Tokyo like a few times with the kids. And on some of those trips, uh, mom will tag along. And when that happens, usually me and my brother uh, will like, uh, pay for mom's airfare or we'll split it. Um, last time that uh, she went, yeah, they went to Tokyo Disneyland last year, sometime last year, sometime recently. And um, me and my brother, we pay for mom's airfare and mom helps to take care of, um, you know, the two kids that my sister has. So they were all flying in the economy, right? So, but if it wasn't for my mom taking her kids, I was telling my brother like, let's just put mom in like premium economy or like, let's put mom in business class, you know, if it's not like stupidly expensive, like that's where I think I would pay for a business class seat is like for mom, because you know, it's mom and she's earned it. 
and she's like, you know, like 70 now. And like, it would probably just be better for her to have a business class seat. But, you know, on the plane and stuff, they all travel together. They want to sit together. You know, I'm, I'm not paying for my sister to fly in business class. Um, yeah, but, you know, the next time my mom, like, travels by herself, which is sometimes she'll fly to Hong Kong, you know, like, that's where I'm, you know, next time I might just tell my mom, okay, you know what, I'm just going to buy you a business class seat. Or, like, hey, me and my brother will, like, we'll split the, we'll split the cost. Sometimes we give her, um, like, some spending money, like, maybe, like, 500 bucks so that she can go shop and buy for something oh my god okay we're running along but like, it just reminds me of this one story so mom did go back to hong kong and macau I, I was born in hong kong but i grew up in macau and um she was connecting in taipei airport uh, coming back and uh this was like late last year sometime last year in the fall and uh, i went back to visit earlier this year uh, i was staying at my mom's place in vancouver and she was just telling me, but she had just gone back um, from uh, Asia, and I visited her like a week or two later. And she was telling me how she was connecting in Taipei Airport coming back. She was at a shop. There's a lot of shops. Uh, it, I was just in Taipei Airport. So they make you, it's, it, they have this new flow where newer airport layouts, when they renovate it, when they build newer airports, they force you to walk through all the shops between security and immigration and where the gate is, obviously is so that people walk by the shops and spend more money, duh. But she said she was at some shop and she was looking at a pair of sneakers, some pair of sneakers, and then they were $1,000. $1,000 pair of sneakers. I had to check, I had to clarify to make sure that it was really that expensive. But she was at the checkout she was like going to buy a thousand dollar pair of sneakers which is not necessary but you know with mom it's like i just let mom do whatever now unless she's like eating junk food because she's like pre-diabetic and i just put my foot down for that like exercising you have to exercise you have to go for walks you can't eat junk food things like that it it's like you know but beyond that it's like if you want to go buy something with money like go. So I didn't like give her like a hard time, but I noticed a thousand a thousand dollar for sneakers. But anyways, so she she hardly ever uses a credit card. She pays for cash with everything, right? Um she knows how to use a credit card, but it's very rare. She only uses it very occasionally. Sometimes when she goes out to lunch, maybe with friends, once in a while. Very rare, very rare that she uses a credit card. And she tried to use her credit card. She has one credit card, and she tried to use it, but because she uses her credit card so little, and uh, she's using it in a location she she's never used it before, the fraud protection or whatever just kicked in, and, like, the card didn't work, right? Um, you know, that's how all, like, Visa, MasterCard, Amex, they all have that kind of thing. If you are always using your credit card in your hometown, in, like, the U.S., and then out of nowhere... Without warning, a charge goes to a credit card from Taiwan. The systems are going to flag it, right? If you're if you don't if you never travel and suddenly you know there's a purchase tries to ring through and halfway around the world, you know it's probably going to get blocked. So she doesn't know she didn't know why it didn't go through, but in retrospect, she's like, "Well, yeah, I probably didn't need the shoe, so thank God it didn't go through." But I'm like, oh, "Yeah, that's a." Uh, um, I didn't have the heart to tell my brother, but my brother freaks out so much about, like, expensive things. Like, my brother doesn't like anyone in the family spending money on anything. So, uh, yeah, but it was interesting that, yeah, mom tried to buy a $1,000 pair of sneakers. Uh, you know, that she had time to kill when she was connecting, and the, all the shops are there. That's, how, that's why they design the airports like that. They know people have time to kill, when they're connecting and all the shops are right there, you get a little bored, you have some time to kill, your credit card's right there, you're going to buy something. So, yeah, but um, I told her, well, thank God your credit card didn't go through, you know. But, yeah, we do subsidize her her travels, uh, her airfare. We give her some money to spend. So, all right, yeah. Otherwise, there wasn't like, too many, like, super interesting. I just went to work, honestly. It's uh, my first collab trip. I want to do a collab trip to New York, not for two weeks, maybe just for like a week or less. New York's really expensive. Um, 
But I kind of want to go the week before New York Pride and maybe get like three collabs. If I flew to New York just to do three collabs for like, and I stayed there for like four or five days, maybe a week, um, that's worth it. I think that would be like worth my return on the investment. So yeah, so I might actually look in that pretty soon. But I'm going to switch gears. It's the end of April now. I'm going to switch gears a little bit to the other business that I am starting because that is really about to ramp up over like May, June, July into the summer. And when I have more to share about that, I will definitely share it. But like the hard work for that other business hasn't begun. And kind of during like the May, June, July, August period is where like the launch is. And that's where the hard work is really gonna happen. So for the month of May, you know, I, I spent a lot of time on the OnlyFans and stuff with the collabs, with this big April Asia collab trip. Now that that's all done, I'm going to spend as much of the month of May into, you know, at least the first bit of June, just really focusing on getting the other business off the ground. But yeah, I kind of want to go to New York. Uh, I like visiting New York. I think there's a bunch of great creators there. Let's see if I can make that happen. But I will keep you all updated. But until next time, bye.